I was requested to speak about the Jacob Sheep Matrix. And this can take different formats. But first of all, let's look at who was Jacob. I'm sure when all of us saw that, uh, those who are like the Bereans probably have already gone ahead of the preachers. You have already searched about Jacob. You have read and you're not just waiting, but you have already gone through it. And if not, then I want to strongly believe that you'll be able to do that. So Jacob was the second son to Isaac and Rebekah, the brother to Esau, children of Isaac. They were twins. But as you all know, that even when you are twins, there is always one who comes out first, and that one is called the firstborn. And then we have the one who follows, even if it is just at a span of two minutes or one hour, then you still have a firstborn and secondborn. Even when a C-section is done, you cannot remove both of them at the same time. So the one the doctor picks first is the firstborn. Then the other one is the second born. Now, an interesting scenario is painted here, whereby when these children are in the mother's womb, they are twins and they are fighting inside there. For those of you who are keen fathers, when your wife is expectant, if you are very keen and observant, I will steal a few of those moments and just observe her when she's asleep and see how the baby moves in the womb. And you can literally see a movement from this side to this side. You can see a kick here, a kick there, or you could be having a meal and you just see your wife, Ack! if she's expectant. Then you ask, what happened? The baby kicked me. Then you're wondering, how did the baby kick inside the womb? If you are single here, please, uh, that may just pass you by. But those who are married, they will understand what I'm talking about. So these children were fighting in their mother's womb. And Rebekah inquires of the Lord and asks, why is there war in my womb? And the Lord tells Rebekah that Inside your womb, there are two nations. And these two nations, they will wage warfare to each other. These are two nations. You are carrying twins. And from that time, there is already a prophetic word on what will happen. And God tells Rebekah, that you are carrying two sons, and the lastborn, the firstborn, will serve the firstborn, the, the secondborn. And you know, a mother, being a mother, keeps these things to herself. She does not share with the father of the children. And so, when you look at that, you find that this paints the fighting in the womb becomes like a foreshadow. It becomes like a pakasa. You can be able to foretell that there is going to be two nations, and these two nations will not be at peace with each other. That is Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. You can also read 35. 10 to 13. Somebody open there. I will expect somebody to read for us. So Esau represents a nation called Edom. And Jacob represents a nation called Israel. So out of Rebekah's womb, we have two nations. We have Israel, then we have Edom. And the Bible clearly says that though Esau was older, he was to serve Jacob. And I know many of us, we come from a patriarchal society 
where the firstborn ndiye kusema true or false the firstborn ndiye kusema the other day i was nominated an elder in my village in my sub location so i received a letter telling me that there is a meeting for the elders they would be meeting on this particular day so i squeezed off my program and i went to attend that uh, meeting and in that meeting one of the things that they wanted to do was to come up with a leadership of elders in the sub location people who can be able to help make decisions that touch on that sub location and in that sub location there are four smaller clans and i was amazed that even at that level when they were giving instructions and direction they said the chair must come from this family because they are the firstborns of the sub location then any other of these smaller clans they can be distributed other posts and i stood and i protested and i told them what of if there is no credible leader in the other family but the other people are more credible than the person you are going to raise and they said this is how we have always done it and i told them let the majority have their way but us as a minority we shall have our say even if you don't hear but at least you have done what you have had an alternative voice so many times when you are the firstborn there is so much expectation on you there is so much that people look up to you on everybody is seeking for direction from you but who unto you if you have a second born called jacob who feels and is like a prophetic word is upon him that you will serve him it is not easy even if that second born has all the wealth but you are the first born courtesy demands that before anything is done you are recognized hallelujah and indeed there are blessings that cannot come from a second born if the first born is there so that is the order but look at how god is challenging that order and that is why many times i tell people yes i may be a person from luya land but i don't belong to luya land i may be a kalenjin but i'm not a kalenjin I may be Kikuyu but I'm not Kikuyu. I may be a Kisi but I'm not Kisi. The day I became born again, my identity changed. I became a Christian and that is my tribe number 1. Therefore, even in my family, if my second born is stronger than the first born, I will not stick to the traditions. I will recognize the position. But I will not say because my first born son has not married, the second born cannot get married. Hallelujah. Tunangoja nani aoe? Because yeye ndio na haja hajaonekaniwa. Na hata haonyeshi dalili. But the second born, God amemuonekania mapema and he's ready and he's rife. I will talk to the first born and tell him, release your brother to go. When your time comes, you will have your way i'm speaking not from the blues i'm speaking something that i have seen practically when one of my nephews the second born was ready the first born wasn't ready but today both of them are married and they are happily married praise be to god 
So we are not. Yes, we may, because of our upbringing, we may have a little bit of that feeling. We may have a little bit of that imagination that because of the firstborn, I'm sharing this so that we can be able to get the background of this. And look at it and say, it must be so and so. But if so and so is not moving, things cannot stand. And it is here for the glory of God. Now, when you hear Jacob, naturally, you hear a person with a bad character. You hear a person who is a trickster, a cheat, a person that you not want to associate with. This is a man when he waits when his brother has gone hunting. He comes back. He's so tired. He's wondering, how will I get my food? And he... Being a man who does not go out there, he's just the mother's boy right in the, in, the chick, in the kitchen there every other time. The guy has food, the guy has soup, and he waits when the brother is tired, and when he comes in, he's hungry. Oh, I'm so tired, what can I eat? And he says, I have some food for you. But you know what? It's not for free. It's give and take. And he looks at the guy and tells him, yes, I'll give you this bowel of soup. But you give me your birthright. Already it had been prophesied, but this guy is trying now to authenticate what had been spoken to him. So what does he do? He talks and tells his brother to give him his birthright. And the brother, because of the stomach, tell your neighbor the stomach, he hands over his birthright. And when I speak about that, it reminds me a lot. Many of us Christians, we have been compromised because of the stomach. We have sold what rightfully belonged to us. We have sold what we needed to hold on, what we needed to hang on. Imagine if Esau had held on to his birthright. Jacob would not have gone anywhere. But he released it. Today, Many of our leaders can never stand out for us because of tumbocracy. Tumbo? Tumbocracy. Today you hear, before anything important is passed, money must change what? Hands. Everybody is asking, what is in it for me? If there is nothing in it for me, then let it pass. I have nothing to do with it. May God help us. So Jacob comes out as a person who is a trickster, a cheat. And unfortunately, even in the house of God, many of us, despite the fact that we are no longer working with the traditions of this world, we still exhibit the old man of Jacob. We still exhibit trickery, and cheating among us, not out there, among us brethren. May God help us. Small wonder, it is very hard even to borrow money among Christians. Even when somebody has, he looks at you with a strong face and tells you, my brother, I would have helped you. I would have actually borrowed you this money. But I don't have. Not that he doesn't have. He wants to keep the relationship between you and him as a brother. Am I speaking to somebody? Because the moment I give you, then you don't behave like I, you owe me. And you want life to behave like normal. And we come here and we sing praise the Lord, hallelujah, and me I'm thinking about the 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, a million shillings I gave you. And you have just conned me. I'm hurting, but you are rejoicing. 
But because I'm your brother, because we are in Christ, because we are all Sittamites, you feel there is nothing I can be able to do. This is the story of Jacob and Esau. It's hard for Christians to be partners in business because of this thing called trickery and cheating. It's hard for even somebody to entrust you with resources. Maybe somebody is working in Bahrain, UK, Australia, just to send you money and you stand for his project from the beginning to the end and deliver the project to them. Trickery. Dishonesty, lack of trust. That is the story of this man. Together with the mother, they go behind when Esau has gone hunting. And when they are still, Esau is still out in the field, the mother has even dropped. And listen that the father wants to bless Esau. And they create a scene to a point where they slaughter a sheep. They make soup. They give the father. And they take the fur of the sheep. They cover on Jacob's, face, Jacob's hands. So when the father touches, he agrees, yes. Though the voice is betraying you, the voice is for Jacob. Lakini... Mwiri nasema ni sawa, ni yeye. I mean, if this is not trickster, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. This is at a different level. Are we together? You know, we close ourselves and something looks so real. A deal looks like it is genuine. It is here. You sense some doubt, but because he's a brother, because he's one of us, you trust it. When Esau comes back, Isaac realizes he lost it. And those days you can't bless twice. Once the blessing is gone, it is gone. Some of us, if an investment is gone, it is gone. You cannot retrieve it. You can't. I know of people who have lost their retirement money. Because they put in a scheme. You remember the Desi times? And I don't know why when tricksters want to cheat the public, they come through the church. Pastor, we need to be sensitive. They came through bishops. They came through reverence. They came through apostles. And forms are dished. And everybody receives it. The word of the pastor is sacrosanct. Touch not my anointed one. Hallelujah. And somebody takes two million, puts in this, three million, puts in this. And you're told the following day, you have this and you have this and you have this. Then all of a sudden, you discover your blessing. Phew. Genesis 25, 29 to 34. And Genesis 25, 30, 25 to 43. Pastor, you can read us that. Whatever in your eyes, please stay. I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because of you. He added, name your wages and I will pay them. Jacob said, you know how I have worked with you and how your livestock have, has fared under my care. The little you have had before I came has increased greatly, and the Lord has blessed you wherever I have been. But now, when and now, when may I do something for my household? What shall I give you? He said. Don't give me anything, Jacob replied. But if you do this one thing for me, I will go on tending your flocks and watching over them. Let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb, and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages. 
and my honest and my honesty will testify for me in future whenever you check on wages you have paid me. Any God in my possession that is not speckled or spotted, or any lamb that is not dark colored, will be considered stolen. Agreed, said Laban. Let, let it be as you have said. That same day, he removed all the male gods that were stripped or spotted, and all the speckled or spotted female gods had white on them, and all the dark colored lamps, and he placed them in the care of his sons. Then he put a three-day journey between himself and Jacob. While Jacob continued to turn the rest of, while Jacob uh, continued to turn the rest of Laban's flocks, Jacob, however, took fresh cut branches from poplar and almond planters and made white strips on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white in a wood on the, of the branches. Then he placed the peeled branches in all watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they came to drink. When the flocks were in heat and came to drink, they met it in front of branches, and they bore young that was tricked or speckled or spotted. Jacob set apart the young of the flock by themselves, but made the rest first the strict and dark colored animals that belonged. that belonged to Laban. Thus he made separate flocks for himself and did not put them with Laban's animals. Whenever the stronger females were in heat, Jacob would place the branches in traps in front of animals so they would make near the branches. But if the animals were weak, he would not place them there. So the weak animals went to Laban and the strong ones to Jacob. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and male servants and men servants and camels and donkeys. Thank you. The matrix. <laughs> now, before you reach there, Jacob, having cheated his father, having cheated his brother, when he runs away, he meets a man called Laban, who is his uncle and his father-in-law. And as the Swahili say, Pwagu hukutana na Pwaguzi. <laughs> so Jacob meets this damsel, and he's happy, and he falls in love. And Jacob, uh, Laban tells this man, if you really love my daughter, you'll have to work for me for seven years. And this guy doesn't care. He says, just seven years? And that's why young men who are here and you're not yet married, please, don't expect to get a daughter's, somebody's daughter, just for free. Imagine working for seven years to raise dowry. Everything, not a part of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And by the same extension, allow me to say this, because me, I teach and I speak to men many times. If you are here and you are married and you love that woman, please, and you have the capacity to pay dowry, please, don't stay with somebody's daughter as a gift. Go back to her parents and appreciate them. Traditionally, we say dowry is not never finished. Please go and finish what you agreed and remain with no debt but the debt of love. And it doesn't mean that when you do that, then you have stopped, that you cannot support them. No. I sat with my father-in-law. We had some balances of those things and asked him, Daddy, I see we have a few cows left. He said, I have no more strength to take care of cows, so don't bring me cows. I sat with him and he told me, instead of cows, convert it into money and asked him, what will be your exchange rate? He told me and I went, looked for money and I sorted him out. 
I have a wife who is not on higher purchase. Am I speaking to somebody? I didn't know where that came from. I didn't intend to preach that. That's a season, a message for another day. So Laban gives this guy a task, seven years, but come on the wedding day. And that is where we have this issue of the veil. You have to unveil somebody and know before the pastor declares. I don't know how this man was blinded that he had even to go and sleep with this person, with Leah, only for the morning to come and he realizes that he was with Leah and not Rachel. Then he goes back to the father-in-law and tells the father-in-law, Hey, what have you done to me? Oh, you have cheated me. You have tricked me. He doesn't remember that he is a product of cheating and trickery where he came from. And that is what happens. Even when somebody is a consta in our midst, when he's conned, he never remembers that he also conned others. The conscience has been, you know, like a stone in water where dirt has covered it that the water cannot be able to clean. Then he's given an extra task and he says, now you have to work for another seven years to get Rachel. So the guy paid dowry 14 years and ended up with a polygamy that he never thought of at the beginning. Now, he goes to his master and says, now I want to go back home. I have worked for you all these years. Now, when will I ever work for myself? And that is part of what I want to share this morning. You have worked for an employer for all these years. You have worked for people all these years. When will you ever now work for yourself and your family? And I'm glad that Jacob worked faithfully for his employer. Many of us cannot be entrusted even with a kinyosi. We cannot even be trusted with an Mpesa shop. We cannot even be entrusted at our workplace. When somebody looks at you as a believer at the workplace, the first thing they see, they see is a zombie. They see a lazy person. I made up my mind that where I work, I will always purpose to be among the best. That when I stand in that office with a testimony, somebody does not say, how can you be preaching to us in this office and you are at the bottom? I said, never. I strive my level best. Right to the top leadership of Britain, they know this guy is a worker in Kisum. And so I can stand and pray without somebody pointing fingers. I have purpose to live with integrity and character so that when you stand to speak, people look at you and they're like, oh, we have this person here. He can be entrusted with company resources. He can be entrusted with human beings in that office. He can be entrusted with things and property. By the grace of God, it is something you can work on at your workplace. But as you labor for that employer, like Jacob, you have to ask yourself, so when will I ever work for myself? Indeed, God blessed Jacob, uh, Laban, because of who? Jacob. It was evident. It was practical. He could see that the sheep had multiplied. The camels had multiplied. Everything had increased. Are you doing that multiplication for your worker, for your employer? Or are you sitting there? By the way, if you are never faithful with your employer, you can never be faithful to yourself. If reporting time is 8 and you are reporting at 9, even when you start your own business, you report at 10. So Jacob had already mastered and he knew what it was. Then he enters into an agreement and says, now I want to work for wealth that I will go with. 
and he has a strategy. Tell your neighbor he has a strategy. And it is a strategy of wealth creation. Many of us want to enjoy poverty. Many of us want to live in poverty. And we keep on saying, Jesus said that the poor shall always be among you. So you glorify poverty. He never said that you'll be the one to be poor. He never said I'll be the one to be poor. He said the poor will always be around. Let them be around, but I will not be part of them. Praise be to God. Jacob understands. He has made somebody else rich. But it's time now for himself to become rich. It is time for himself to become wealthy. And so he realized that if he says, give me part of what we have already created, it will create a war. So Laban, without understanding, agrees to his strategy that let us separate the spotted animals. Those that are not spotted, they'll be yours. But those that are spotted will be mine. It looks a good deal, isn't it? How long will it take you for you just to create spotted animals alone? So Laban saw a very gigantic task here. That this man will work for him for a very, very long period of time. But he had a strategy. Quickly as we come uh, to almost concluding. So, as a man you have to put food on the table for your family. I refuse to eat the bread of idleness. And here we are not talking about employment. Sometimes employment can be scarce. But as a man, as a brother, you must put your foot down. Hata kama ni kwenda kwa mjengo ndugu enda. Come back. Our women are crying that we have abandoned them. We are over relying on them. And they are right. You find a man is seated in the sofa. The sofa was bought by money from the charmer. He's watching large screen that was bought by the same lady. You are driving in a car that was bought by this. And then you even have audacity of even being unfaithful to the very person. And they start bleeding. Because we have refused to work hard. Find something that you can lay your hands on and refuse to eat the bread of idleness. If you want any respect in your house as a man, put food on the table. Praise be to God. When things change, as sometimes they change, but you have been providing, even your wife will understand. God created Adam and gave him dominion over the earth to dominate it. And you can see Jacob dominating, having dominion and ruling. It is dangerous for a man to have one stream of income. You look at your pay slip, income is one. How many expenses are on it? So I want to give you a homework. Look at your income, sources of income, and then on the other side, put there another list of expenses. If you have a pen, write it down, you'll finish the homework at home. And you realize that yes, the income can be one called salary. But expenses, you start with the payee. 30%. Hallelujah. Then you put NHIF. Then you put NSSF. Then you go and start putting the landlord. Then you put electricity. Then you put water. Then you put transport. Then you put children's fees. Then you come <laughs> clothing. Then you come food. Already I have mentioned more than 10 It's dangerous. As God blesses you with the work that he has given you, with the employment that he has given you, open your eyes and have a strategy 
where you can use what you have to get what you do not have. Your salary may be small, but you can use it to get a loan that you can invest in a farm somewhere and plant trees over a period of five years, over a period of ten years. When you harvest, your life will not be the same. And the tree is not asking you anything other than the water that God brings down. And as you labor in that office, the trees are doing what? One seedling is five bob. When it is fully grown, it can give you 10,000, even 50,000. Am I speaking to somebody? Have a strategy. Have a strategy. Whatever God has blessed you with, think outside the box. As you think of an extra hustle you can do, remember you are creating a job opportunity for a brother in the church, for your brother at home, for your neighbor, for somebody else, because you can't be in two places at the same time. What an ibia. What an ikula. Kwasipokukula, wataka wakule wapi. Make it big enough. They still, and you still get. Praise be to God. You know, some of us, you want to stick to that small shop and that job. When you are not there, you close. Like right now, it is closed. Until we finish at 8 and you go back and open. But the owner of Naivas, does he have to be in all the branches? Hello? Does he have to be in all the branches? The owner of Safaricom, does he have to have it to be in every, in every phone? Let God open our eyes that we have a strategy that whatever we put our hands on can grow and shelter many other people. So quickly, what are some of the businesses that we can be able to grow? Because when we talk about this matrix, we are not just talking about the matrix, we are talking about wealth creation. There are those who could be in transport industry. One matatu, for example, employs how many people? The formal and the informal, the legal and the unlegal. They all eat out of it. Hallelujah. But as the owner, you also have something you are eating in it. If you can get a loan and you get that truck, the fowl, you know, be the one going to drive it, but you can track it as it transports people's goods, as it helps community, you are making what? Money. Praise be to God. The other day I saw when Pastor Ibrahim was dedicating one of the houses here, and people made a lot of fuss out of it. That's one of my dream areas that I'm headed to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because even for me, if I collapse here and I die now, the next thing you are looking for, you are looking for a house, you are looking for a coffin, you are looking for a, 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 a mortuary, who says that those things must belong to non-believers? Says who? Is it a sin? Any business that I will not vouch for is a business that is engaging in sin. Things that are against who? God. But anything your hands can lay upon and those are virgin areas that you can look at yourself and say, this is it. You just buy a house. Instead of it going to the matatu, you put it there. When somebody passes on and is a brother, why wouldn't I come to you if you are my brother? And I come to you. Praise be to God. Don't look at me like that. I'm still a deacon and I'm still an elder. 
And I'm still a pastor. Some places I'm called pastor. You know me, I own all those titles. Others call me even bishop. Depending on how I have ministered to you. Praise be to God. Don't go and open a bar and tell me, elder said, now I've opened a bar. No. You can build up rentals. And it can be an extra stream of income for you. The people who own flats in this town, how many of them belong to us as Christians? Some of them is not because they have so money, so much money. Some of them is because they learn to team up 10 people. If 10 teachers come together, each one of them can get a loan of 3 million unsecured. If you are 10, that is how much? 30 million. Do you have a contractor here? Can 30 million raise a flat? Many times we perish because of lack of knowledge. Many times we perish because of the Jacob trickery and cheating. We don't trust each other. I know there is the people here. There can be five of them and each one of them can get even a loan of 10 million unsecured. But we can't come together. We have no strategy as Christians. People out there have investment clubs. I say this with authority because some of them are my clients. You see somebody with an investment club and tells you we have these five million lying on a bank account somewhere. Is there any other place that we can be able to put this money and it gives us this? And I tell them, come, I have the money market. And they put it there as they look for a project. Who say that as brethren, we cannot buy land? in a prime place, subdivide it, and sell it out. Instead, we are trickers, we are cheaters, we don't work with trust. That is the Jacob matrix. Hallelujah. Events and catering, hotel industry, if we ganged up together, can't we put up a house, a, a hostel here? Can we put up a facility that we can say, that is for the Walokole. And we can walk in, alcohol free, drug free. Praise be to God. And bring it to the standard that if any person walks into Eldoret, he says, that is the place. Spirit of excellence. Spirit of excellence. Time fails me. Shops, hardwares, schools. Why is it that the schools that are successful in most places, very few of them belong to Christians? Can't we join up? Can't we find something? For those who are starters, we have vinyosis, we have car washers. We have farming and I have alluded to it. There is so much that we can do to grow our wealth. I've talked about money markets. If you are, if you are risk averse, you can't do anything. You can put your money into a money market and it can be able to generate interest for you. I have a lady client of mine. She does nothing else. She just leaves her on her money market. She has 15 million on that account, which gives her almost 250,000. She can travel to any country of her choice, comes back, tells me, James, I've come back, goes to her account, gets her money, and runs like nobody's business. Very healthy, no strain, no work. She worked for her money, and now her money is working for her. A strategy for wealth creation. Bonds. Right now, the government has issued a seven-year bond, and it is giving 16% per annum. How many of us are willing to invest in it? Okay, I'm going to say, oh, he's a ruto. 
Hey, na tutalipwa. The Bible says, cast your bread on many waters. Some will disappear, but some will grow. And some will give you money. And so you want to sit with your money looking at it and saying, yeah, I have a million, yeah, I have a million. <laughs> but it's not growing. Put it into that bond. Time fails me, I would have taught you how bonds work, but that can be a story for another day. How money markets work, but that is a story for another day. It needs a retreat. Praise be to God. If you have a million, you give the government 900. You remain with a million. You remain with a 16% in your pocket. So if it's a million, you remain with what? 160. You give eight, it's 40. Then every year, you just simply get your 160 for the seven years. In the comfort of your home, in the comfort of your house. Strategy for wealth creation. Walk into the CBK. You'll get help. Am I speaking to somebody? They have not sent me here to speak for them. But I'm just giving you that. I have my product called Money Market. If you don't want to go there, come to me. Walk into any other fund that is doing money market, they will give you the professional advice. So as I conclude three critical areas for a man, as I finalize on this strategy of Jacob. Number one, savings. As a man, learn to save. Don't save for the sake of saving, save for the sake of investment. A saving that is not geared towards investment does not help you in any way. You can use the bank, you can use the circus, you can use insurance. Build up a strong savings for yourself. You never know the day of calamity. You never know when your employer, you wake up and you are told your job description is not on the organogram. Anybody who has gone through that experience? That your job description, they have created an organogram and you are told, check on it. If your name appears, you are safe. If your job description does not appear, have a fellowship with HR. And you realize that you are earning and eating. Habu, 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 habu. And when the hour of reckoning comes, on the first month that you lose your job, the house girl has to go. Even a dog can't eat. You have war with the cat. Your children scatter. Your wife has no peace because you did not save. The Jacob matrix, before he left for home, he started saving and investing strategically. Number two, as you work as a man, think of your pension. It is a strategy. Today, many men are cursing their children, their sons and daughters because they never planned. They never saw that. And they expected their sons and daughters will be their pension plan. And you realize you have a university student who has graduated his five years in your house. You have even sold the little land that you had and he has no job. He's still a dependent in your house. And because he can't stay like that, he even marries and starts giving children and he's still in your house. And it is not his fault. There is a whole story on social media today where we are crying that men have been left desolate. Have a plan. Retirement plan for yourself. 
as early as you begin working. If you're a business person, never imagine that you'll always be strong and always going to that hardware and always going to that, 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 that uh, law firm or even to that clinic. There's a time when younger people will come in and you'll be shoved aside. Have a pension plan. It's important. Praise be to God. We are growing old. When you start receiving letters that you have been appointed a council of elder in the village, my friend, you're not young anymore. My friend, I'm not young. Hello? When you look at your pay slip, it tells you your next retirement will be. And now you are. And when you retire, because you had no plan, and then somebody asks you, if you never did it in the last 30 years, you have worked for the government. You've worked with TSC. Even if we add you three years, what will you do? Don't you want to just now start looting and stealing? Please go home. I hope I'm speaking to somebody. If you're already there, please bear with me. But if you're not there, this message is for us. Don't start cursing your children your old age. And by the way, even our children know. When they know their grandfather, the grandfather and the grandmother to their children cannot take their children to swimming, they will not come. But if you want children, young children, grandchildren around you, make that environment. When they come, they find they have hot shower in the village. When they come, they find they can be able to go to the English toilet, the Asian toilet in the village. They don't have to be scared going to the tumble you. <laughs> they go and they find, you know, umai kuona mtoto ameenda village, mpaka anafika mahali anaogopa. Two days hajaenda cho. Akienda inapotea. Mpaka anaogopa kukula. Sema mami tunarudi kwetu lini? Tunarudi hapa ndio kwenu. But because the environment <laughs> does not look like their place. As you enjoy the facilities in town, brother, also fix the property that you have in the village. I'm tired of this thing when you are taking a brother home for burial is when they are doing the, 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 the building, they are constructing, things are shambles. Have a strategy. Jacob didn't remain in Laban's place forever. He went back home. Hallelujah. And finally, of the three critical areas, if you are in a position, have insurance. And I'll tell you why. Not because I work for it, but I'll tell you why. One morning, you wake up, you visit a doctor, and the diagnosis is, your health is not good. And you think it's a small thing. I'm feeling a small lump here. And when the diagnosis is done, you find it is cancerous. And the little savings that you had, the investments that you had, they are all wiped in a twinkle of an eye. Health. If you're in a position, take it. Health cover. Praise be to God. It's part of shielding your wealth creation. You have a car, you know what I'm talking about. You have property, you know what I'm talking about. As people run with mandamano, how many people have lost their property? There are many, true or false. Some are on loans, some are on whatever. But when you have taken this thing called insurance, it shields you. It cushions you. It takes you back to where you are. It can salvage you. Despite his character, 
that many of us will not wish to be identified with. Jacob was greatly blessed. And in Genesis 32, verse 24 to 29, Jacob became restored back to his maker. As he was going back home, he met with God's angel. They wrestled the whole night. And that was Jacob's conversion debt. It doesn't matter how long you have been in trickery. It doesn't matter the things that you have done. It doesn't matter how guilty you are. Just like Jacob, when he met the Lord, that was his turning point. And from that night, the destiny of Jacob struggling on his own ended. Jacob's name was changed from Jacob, he became Israel. And because of that, he becomes one of the great patriarchs of Israel to death. Today when we pray, we say the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That very trickster. My brother, it doesn't matter how much you have sunk. It doesn't matter how much you are deep into sin. It doesn't matter how much you are deep into drugs. It doesn't matter how much you are deep into corruption. It doesn't matter how much deep you are in things of this world. You can have an encounter with the Lord. And to conclude it all, for so that Jacob could have a permanent reminder, the angel broke his hip bone. So from here on, Jacob walks with a limp. So that the limp reminds him of his past. But he has a future. You may have scars. Scars don't heal. But they don't determine your tomorrow. You may have failed in your business. You may have failed in something. But that is not the end. You can pick up your pieces and go. It is never too late for you to rise up and do something for the glory and honor of the Lord.